Welcome to the Long Range Pursuit. I'm Mike Davidson. We've got a great show for you this week. Aaron was lucky enough to draw a premium once in a lifetime tag in New Mexico for bighorn sheep. We did that through Cabela's Tags. They recommended hunting with GT Nun and Frontier Outfitters. Uh, GT is known for taking the biggest rams off of this mountain every year. Uh, Aaron's got a great shooting tip this week on doping wind. Uh, stick around, it's gonna be a great show. All right, in the truck, first morning, we got two days of scouting ahead of us. We gotta find a big ram. Uh, met GT, met Rick, got some nice mules loaded in the trailer. We're gonna have a good day. It's about a two and a half hour ride up here above Timberline where we can look into the big basin where most of the rams stay this time of year. Uh, and we've probably got an hour, to hour and a half walk around the top where we can blast down in there and see what we can find. Hopefully something, uh, if we find a big ram, we're gonna pack the camp in here tomorrow and sit on him, be ready for opening morning, so. Did he say two and a half hour walk? I'm glad I cleaned out my backpack this morning. Nice weather today. Uh, forecast says uh, opener's gonna be nice and wet, so we're gonna try to find us a sheep here. We're up a couple days early, and then uh, cross our fingers that we don't get rained out when it's time to actually shoot one. We're going to try to get up a little higher and uh, get a better angle on that. GT says one of them looks pretty good from the top. Just can't quite see all the horn. gonna slip up over the knob here and look for this big ram that we haven't seen yet. I guess he's even bigger. I guess we figured out why everybody wants a Wheeler Peak sheep tag today. We saw, what was the total, 35? 35 rams today, and uh, a couple really good ones. I guess that's why it's hard to draw. GT uh, has a pretty nice little spot here. He's got it figured out. They just killed a Whopper mule deer. Uh, 260, 260, that's a stomper, a stomper buck. But, um, his frontier outfittings hooking us up this week and we're gonna have a we're gonna have a good time. We're gonna be on a sheep here in a couple days. The most important part of long range shooting can be your ability to dope the wind and determine what the wind is doing, not just where you're standing, but downrange. In this week's shooting tip, we're gonna teach you three techniques that allow you to bracket the wind and bring it into a quantifiable, attainable process that we can systematically go through and achieve. But first, I wanna talk about a very simple, very easy concept that gives us the ability to bracket our wind speed in, in, in attainable values and also execute these long range shots. And all it takes is a little preparation in our cartridge and bullet selection. Uh, let's just do an example, and I think that'll illustrate the concept. A lot of people set up to shoot long range and they're, they're not quite sure what cartridge they're gonna pick. Uh, the 308 Winchester has a lot of connotation of being a military tactical long range shooting round. Let's take that cartridge with a 168 grain hollow point boat tail bullet and compare it against a seven millimeter Remington Magnum with a 168 grain Berger VLD, very high ballistic coefficient. With the 308 at a thousand yards, in a 10 mile an hour wind, we have about nine minutes of angle of wind deflection. Now that's 90 inches. Compare that against the seven millimeter Remington Magnum, that's a 168 grain bullet, just over 3,000 feet per second. We're talking four and a half minutes of angle, or 45 inches. That's half the wind deflection. Now think about that for a minute. What that means is if you shoot the 308 Winchester, you have to be twice as good at doping your wind so that you can make that shot, make that compensation, and, and be the long range hero of the day. 
if you're shooting the 7mm Remington Magnum, it allows you a little more margin of error in your ability to dope the wind and consequently your point of impact and your hit probabilities come up. So uh, if recoil is an issue, take that same concept of efficient bullets and adequate velocity and look at like the 65284 with the 140 grain bullet. Again, high ballistic coefficient, adequate velocity, reduced wind deflection. Now what we're going to take this information and, and spin it and turn it into a technique that allows us to systematically analyze our conditions and dope or determine our wind speed and direction and with that information we can execute a proper ballistic compensation. Now when we come back from the break we're going to talk about those three specific techniques that will allow us to do that. In a lot of long range shooting situations your success is going to be based solely on your ability to determine your wind speed and direction and make a proper wind compensation. Now we're going to cover three really simple techniques that allow us to uh, apply a bracketing technique of estimating our wind in 0, 5, 10, 15 mile per hour increments. And with the right cartridge combination this is going to put you on target in the vital zone. Now the first technique is really simple, we've covered this before, it's using a handheld wind meter. Uh, if I'm set up with my spotting uh, gear and equipment and I've got my shooter beside me and I'm looking at some of our other indicators for the scope, looking at the target, I've also got my wind meter up here uh, automatically measuring the crosswind speed and then obviously we can determine the direction because we're standing right here. So I'm measuring crosswind speed while I analyze my target and I'm looking at the wind meter and kind of running an average on, on how fast that wind's blowing. Again, only the crosswind component is measured there. Now this is a very simple technique but its limitation is it's only telling us what the wind is doing right here where we're standing. And in a lot of situations the wind across the canyon or down in the valley is going to be completely different than the wind that we're measuring right here. So we need some more techniques. Now the second technique is I feel the most useful, the handiest, probably the most applied technique that we have in our arsenal uh, when we're out shooting long range and whether it's in the field or on targets or shooting schools etc. And that's mirage. Analyzing the mirage or the heat waves which are caused by atmospheric distortion because of differences in the ground and air temperature. Now what we're looking for is wind speed and direction. So let's start with a no wind condition. We've got mirage downrange, we see it in the scope uh, and it's boiling straight up. Uh, that tells us that we have no left to right component and it also tells us that there's zero wind speed. So zero mile per hour wind speed. That indication can show whether it's dead calm or if we have a headwind or tailwind. So if we've got a 10 mile an hour tailwind and we look through our scope, we're going to see that vertical mirage. That tells us that mirage automatically uh, quantifies or calculates the crosswind velocity only. So it automatically tells us only the crosswind speed. So let's look at a couple different variables. Uh, let's look at a 5 mile per hour wind. If we're looking downrange through our scope and we see that mirage tip over to the right at a 45 degree angle, what that tells us is we have a left to right wind and a 45 degree angle also tells us that we're about a 5 mile per hour wind. So we take that value, uh, let's do it one more, let's look at 10 miles per hour. That would be a horizontal wind or 90 degrees. If we look down range we see horizontal wind, uh, 90 degrees, that tells us left to right wind. It also tells us it's at least 10 miles per hour. Now the at least is the kicker here because higher wind speeds still indicate with a horizontal mirage. So we have to be careful. It also makes the wind meter uh, more applicable in those higher wind speeds. Usually higher winds mean more consistent winds. So the wind meter becomes a more uh, effective tool uh, in analyzing the direction. Now the way that we see Mirage is using high power optics, whether it's a spotting scope or a rifle scope. This is one argument for using a high magnification rifle scope is it allows us to uh, zoom in and analyze and detect that mirage. Now we can zoom in on our target or we can zoom in on a point say halfway to our target, analyze the mirage at that point and then use that in our summation of what the wind's doing. So the, the last technique 
uh, is kind of a double check. We take our, our, our wind meter value and we take what we've seen in the spotting scope or our rifle scope uh, for our wind speed and direction downrange and then we double check with analyzing vegetation and, and I'm talking about looking at grass, leaves, you know, watch the trees swaying, watch the push on the trees, uh, even little things like looking at uh, an, an insect hatch or seeds that are floating across your line of sight or uh, spider webs up in the mountains. And you'll take these indications and confirm that direction and magnitude that we've estimated using our wind meter and using Mirage. Now these three techniques combined are going to make you a more efficient shooter and combined with the right cartridge combination and systematically applying that bracketing technique, you'll be able to execute those long range shots making a proper wind compensation. I'm Aaron Davidson. For more shooting tips, go online to longrangepursuit.com. Well, we just hiked up over the hill. We're day two spotting. We're looking for uh, a ram called Dirk. And, uh, He's in that 180 class. We come up over the hill, saw two rams right off the bat. Same ones that we saw this morning when I was shooting my gun. And uh, we need to get closer look. Looks like he's broomed real heavy on one side. But it's been a fun hunt. And you see why this Wheeler Peak tag so coveted, why there's so many people that put in for it, because there's just rams everywhere. It's good stuff. You know, it's nice to be able to get away from the shop for a couple days and, and do a hunt like this. We've been spot some sheep and uh, some nice rams, but nothing we're after. And it looks like we're going to get rained on up here at 12.5. So I don't know. I want to go find a hole to crawl in, I think. like 12, 13 rams across here. We've had uh, rain, hail, gravel, and snow in the last 30 minutes, so we're all freezing, getting our gear back on, hoping it stays clear for the rest of the afternoon. We've got some great mountains back home, but when we got down to New Mexico, up in that high country there, those mountains are unbelievable. I mean, you are way up there, way above the tree line. It can be sunny one minute and hailing on you the next minute, but it, it's beautiful. We put on some miles up in these mountains and everywhere we went, we saw animals. There was sheep in every draw, every pocket. I think one day we saw 60 rams. We saw some elk, saw some good bulls. We had a great group of guys down there. Really, despite the weather, I mean, everybody kept a good attitude. It was fun. One more day of this hiking stuff and uh, we're not any closer to killing a ram. Tomorrow's opening morning. The, the number three ram, you know, Dirk that we saw over here, uh, we spent all mornings hiking all these ridges and glass and everything, thinking we're gonna come over here this evening and size this ram up. We got over here and he's timbered up. Too cold, uh, too windy. So we're thinking we might be a bust for opening day success. I had a couple guys walk right up through where we figured those rams were bedded down. We don't know what we're gonna do now. We've got a bunch of rams over in the other basin, all those rams we saw yesterday. But uh, we've got one hunter on the big ram. We were trying to find uh, another big ram over here. We'll see what the plan is. A bullet's flight path or ballistic profile is defined by its ballistic coefficient and initial muzzle velocity. Both variables are difficult to determine exactly. This results in a calculated trajectory that doesn't match your actual field results. Building your true ballistic profile by calculating a true BC or true muzzle velocity using trajectory validation will allow a precise calculation of ballistic trajectory that matches field shooting results. This is the most critical first step required for long-range ballistic compensation. 
Drawing a bighorn sheep tag is almost a once in a lifetime opportunity. The fact that we drew this the same year Mike got to do a doll sheep hunt made this a really exciting fall with a lot of anticipation. The neat thing about this sheep draw was we used Cabela's tags this year to put in for the sheep areas and the mountain goat and moose and all the premium tags all over the west. And the nice thing about Cabela's tags is they front the money. It's easy, you just build a portfolio, tell them what you want to draw and where you want to draw it, and they'll take care of the rest. Well, this is it. We're gonna see whether those rams are there or not. We were worried last night, they timbered up. We didn't get to put them to bed, had those hunters walk through. If we find them this morning, we got us a big sheep. If we don't, lots of hiking. Started out nice and hot today, then it got cold, then it got hot, and it got cold again. Now it's gonna about get miserable, I think. It's gonna pour on us. Shaking so bad I can't hold her steady. 683, right there. Aaron, it's the ram on the right, is the better of the two. Thanks, Boy, I was worried I wasn't gonna be able to hold still enough been shivering for five hours. Oh I know it. <laughs> we've been sitting up in them rocks for since we've been sitting up in them rocks since noon. Oh yeah. And and here it is 549. 547. Uh, I think he's getting up. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh boy, that was a, that was a solid and shot cool. right there. Man, with the moisture in there, you can see the bullet vapor. Oh yeah, just drop in good. Drop in beautiful, man. Yeah. That was an awesome shot. Good shot, man. Good shot. <laughs> uh, lots of hiking. Right there in the sun. Two big rams opening day, huh? Yeah, yeah, not Sweet. bad. Sweet. Huh? Uh, 680 yards, uh, held just for a little wind. A little five mile an hour breeze coming up canyon. We come off the top there, we were 880. We could have shot up there, but we had a little bit more wind. And just not quite the right shot. We're perfect right here. Man, I gotta sit there just a little bit. I'm shaking just a wee bit. It's pretty exciting. That's a lifetime big horn sheep there. Hey, put it up here, brother. <laughs> right on. Right on, man. Cool thing is, we ain't got much of a hike to get out of here. You know, got a nice hike, man. Your brother got to come. And oh, yeah. Everything was great. Oh, yeah, you can't beat that, man. Ten and a half. Sweet. Right there, huh? Big mature ram. It's as old as they normally get on this mountain. So. It's nice to shoot a big daddy, huh? Oh yeah, I mean, that, there it is. You know, these are the kind of rams you want to harvest because they're the ones that have a tough time making it through the winter, you know? Beautiful Boy, that ram. sitting out all, all morning and cooking and then sitting out all afternoon and freezing to death, that paid off, man. All paid off, didn't it? Look at this thing. Hot dog. Good 
man, that was a big ram. Hey, we had a we had a great hunt. Aaron uh, made a great shot. I can really tell those shooting lessons I've been giving him are paying off. I can't say enough about GT Nunn and his Frontier Outfitting. He's a great outfitter and guide. If you want to hook up with him, just go to his website, give him a ring. Uh, he's an awesome guy. Join us again next week for more shooting tips and more great hunting footage right here on the Long Range Pursuit.